Hey everybody, welcome to episode 18 of the Lit RPG Podcast, the only podcast dedicated to Lit RPG. I'm Ramon Mejia, I'm ready to bring you the latest Lit RPG news, reviews, and of course, author interviews. Uh, this week, I'll be telling you about the latest Lit RPG news and Lit RPG pre-orders coming up, of course. But in new releases and reviews, I'll be talking about The Cadet, uh, Lit RPG, Squadcom 13 Book 1 by D. Roos. Fan favorite, uh, Sigil Online, Paragons, Dexterity Build, Episode 1, Rising Tide, Age of Steam, Book 1, and, of course, Adventures on Terra, Book 1, Beginnings. I'll say, we'll begin with a little RPG news. And little RPG news begin with Realm of Archon, audiobook is out now. Um... Patch 17. That's the first book in that series. And it tells the story of Roman Kazanofikov after he gets confined to Arkhan against his will. And not just to Arkhan, but its deadliest zone, Demon Grounds. Playing, or rather living, as his main character, Crane, is not just about survival for Roman. He longs to exact revenge for his banishment to the virtual world, where the sensation of pain is reached 100%. This is a trapped in a lit RPG virtual reality world uh, storyline here with the Bit of revenge thing going on in there. Um, if you're a fan of the ebook version of this, uh, you probably don't like the the audiobook version of it. And of course, if you uh, want to try out some lit RPG audiobooks, uh, we'll have a link in the show notes where you can get two free audiobooks when you sign up for a trial subscription on Audible. So win win for everybody. Now, next lit RPG story: uh, Desperate Times and Spensons are coming out for pre order. Matthew Sylvester has put out his f- f- two of the his lit RPG novels up for pre-order on Amazon. The first one, Desperate Times, is out on December the 25th of this year, and the second one will be out on February 28th, 2017. They're both available for pre-order right now. Uh, the covers look pretty awesome, I got to say. I'll read you the descriptions of the books uh, because that's all the information we really have about them so far. Um, Desperate Times... The description is, it's 2100. Britain faces its greatest challenge as the remains of the European Combined Armed Forces dig in to repel the imminent Chin Corps Republic invasion of Great Britain. Bombers and missiles destroy the whole swaths of Britain, British cities, and countryside, and every available man and woman over the age of 16 have been conscripted to join the fight. Only, this is in a VR game called World Domination. A game designed to eliminate civilian, technological, physical, and environmental losses, but to still cater for the warlike natures of humans. All the troops are hardwired into their harnesses. The rules are simple. Survive 100 battles and you're free. And die 50 times and you'll receive a lethal dose of poison administered by the game, as war must always have consequences. Take on a special mission and you gain one extra life. Mission credits and valuable power-ups and special weapons. Only... The rules have changed. The European High Command has decreed that soldiers who had 49 deaths are to be kept permanently in game. The 49ers is a regiment of the last chancers. Their commander, Colonel Ron Clark, is desperate to keep his people alive and give them one last chance. Um, This very much sounds like World War III combined with the Hunger Games almost. Um, And that doesn't sound bad to me. Um, so, again, I haven't read anything yet. Uh, the author, um, Matthew Sylvester, has kindly uh, said that he'll send me an advanced copy uh, so I can give it a nice good review before the 25th when it comes out. Uh, so I'll let you know what I think of it after I actually give it a nice good read. And then I'll probably purchase it anyways because I like to support our good little RPG authors. Uh, now, the other book in that series, of course, is going to come out in February. It's a much shorter description. Now, it's France. Versus the Chinko Republic and the remnants of the 49ers are hanging out there with the Russian Special Forces. So there you go. That's all you have for those two. But uh, look them up if you want to pre-order them. I'm sure the author would appreciate it. Uh, now, another book that's going to be coming up for pre-order pretty soon, uh, Verdian Gate Online Cataclysm. It is released of December the 23rd. So a couple days before the 49ers series. Uh, the book cover is pretty sweet. Uh, so... Good job there, uh, Mr. Hunter. Uh, it is going to be available 
for pre-order on December the 13th. Though, so you'll have to wait a few days after you see this podcast. Uh, but I can tell you, the I, I've read a little bit of this on the Royal Road. It's currently there. Um, it's a pretty decent read. Uh, and it being on the Royal Road gives you a chance to actually read uh, the story before it's finished and edited and cleaned up and all the good stuff. So you're going to get some errors, um, some editing things that need to be taken care of. But the story itself is pretty good and it gives you a chance to look it up before you decide if you want to pre-order it um the book description is as follows an extinction level asteroid is cannonballing towards earth collision is imminent international teams of scientists are working around the clock to avoid the cataclysm however the world government's preparing for impact with bad things are happening uh, Jack Mitchell, a 32-year-old EMT living in tiny, a tiny studio apartment on the West Coast, isn't one of the people who's going to survive. Um, so instead, he's going to connect to O's Marketology's Next Gear VR capsule and take a one-way trip into the ultra-immersive fantasy based virtual reality multi-MMORPG Viridian Gate Online. So he's one-way tripping, trapped in the game story. So... um Basically, he's going to virtual reality world. He's going to have a good time. Adventures, action, um, player versus player stuff is going to happen. Uh, a bunch of interesting story archetypes. So take a look at the book description um, on the World Road. We're going to have the link to that story in our show notes. I definitely encourage you to go check it out. And if you like the story, of course, of course on the 13th of December, go up to the book so you can get the nice polished, finished version of that story. Uh, okay. Um last addition to our pre-order list that's coming up here, uh, Sucked Into an RPG, a lit RPG novel out February the 20th, 2017. These are three new edition, uh, four new additions to the pre-order list for lit RPG stories. Now, this is a really um, unknown story to me. Um, it showed someone in um, the lit RPG Facebook group dropped it on there, and um, I'm not actually sure it's lit RPG or not. Uh, the book description doesn't do a really good job of describing the lit RPG elements. Um, so it could be a wonderful lit RPG. It could just be someone using the lit RPG tag. Um, I don't know personally, and I'm not judging it yet, uh, but I'll read you the book description, let you know, and let you decide. Again, it's out in February, so plenty of time to get more information on it. It's a critics call it the most immersive open world fantasy RPG the world has ever seen. Players feel like they're actually in the game. Little did 15-year-old Jamie know how literal that statement means. In the middle of attacking a difficult boss, Jamie gets sucked into the game. It's not long before he learns there's no way back home and that the only hope, only people around him are NPCs. He spends his days completing quests, hoping one will lead him back to reality. But the days go on and on, and he wonders if he will ever see his family again. Then he meets her, another player. She got sucked into the game months ago and has been stuck here ever since. Together, they embark on a journey back to Earth. But is there a way out of this fantasy world, or are they doomed to live there forever? Uh, Now, the last story in our news section is going to be about me. Well, actually, I should say the story that I wrote. Um, Adventures on Terra, book one beginnings, is out now. Finally, this brainchild of mine is actually out in the world on Amazon. And it's not doing half bad with the readers. Um, I will read you the book description. You can decide if you want to go pick it up. I'd appreciate it if you did uh, and leave a review if you like it. Um, Armand Ellington is a 19-year-old kid that always felt out of place. He's an orphan, a gamer, and a role-playing game geek. When he dies after a 72-hour gaming marathon, instead of going to an afterlife, he's transported to a new world governed by rules that are eerily similar to the RPG games he loves. On this new world, Terra, he can be anything he wants, a warrior, a mage, or even a crafter. Only Armand wants more than that. He also wants friends and family. Join Armand on his journey through this amazing new world where he'll go on adventures, explore dungeons, slay monsters, and hopefully find the family and friends that he never had on Earth. There it is, folks. So go take it up. A um, couple bits of news related to the particular story. It's doing so awesome. Uh, recently, Alaron Kong happened to notify me that it hit uh, number one spot in the fantasy TV movie and game tie-in section. So it's a really specific category and it was on, but it did hit the number one spot and that's pretty awesome to me. Uh, so some people like it. 
it has a number of good reviews, mostly fours and fives. Um, they could all just be people that like the podcast or like me, or, um, but they give it a shot and they seem to genuinely enjoy it. And I, I genuinely enjoyed writing it. So I'll have a link on the show notes if you want to check it out. It's on Kindle Unlimited um, and it's there for you to read. Okay. Uh, now on to the upcoming lit RPG list. All the pre-orders that are coming up, folks. We have uh, on December the 19th, The Way of the Outcast, Mirror World Book 3, Brooding Gate Online, December the 23rd, Desperate Times, The 49ers, December the 25th, Video Game Plotline Tester, out January 3rd, Your In-Game, Lit RPG Story from Best-Selling Authors, January the 20th, uh, The Doc Parlden Book 1, The Beginning, February the 7th, Sucked into an RPG, February the 20th, and Speed Science, the second book in the 49ers Lit RPG series, out February the 28th of 2017. There you go, folks. We're going to move on to new releases and reviews. Okay, in new releases and reviews, folks, we have uh, quite a few stories here. Uh, we're going to begin with the Cadet Lit RPG Squadcom 13 Book 1. Uh, this particular book has a odd, odd, confusing beginning. I'll begin with the basics of the story, though. Uh, 223 pages, $4.99, also available on Kindle Unlimited. So those are some really good points. Um, this is written by D. Roos. If you're familiar with the Alter Wood series, he's the same author. If I have to warn you, don't expect to be this be the same kind of story. Uh, the only things that has common is that there's a virtual world involved in both stories, and that's kind of the only connecting idea. They're completely separate stories. Um so just be aware of that. Uh, the beginning of the story reads kind of like an end of the world novel. Supposedly aliens have dropped orbs that confer great power and everyone on earth is willing to kill to get one. Only it turns out it was all actually a futuristic human society and anybody that got one, got one of the orbs was sent into the future and conscripted into a war with some vague alien race. Oh, and did I mention this future population is made up mostly of women because some bio agent that was deployed against humanity in the past killed most of the men and prevented any new ones from being born. Uh, this apparently means that every woman in the future is super desperate and sexually aggressive to any guy transported from the past. Um, if you're confused by that backstory, you're not alone. I was severely confused and conflicted about that particular portion of the story. Thankfully, it doesn't matter. It really has very little to do with the good portion of the story, um, which is after the 22% mark, which is when the lit RPG part of this thing kind of kicks off. Um, what you really need to know about the story is really basic. Paul gets one of these orbs. He lost his limbs in a war in our time. Uh, the orb is, has the ability to regenerate limbs and dysfunctions or what, what, whatever human conditions make, make those people perfectly healthy. So that's why he's going after that particular orb. But uh, instead of using it entirely for himself, he shares with the blind woman. Once they both touch the orb, they share that regenerative capacity of it. And they also find that they have a psychic uh, soul bond which lets them feel each other's emotions and thoughts. This is for character development between the two on a romantic, semi-romantic level. Um, doesn't really pan out in the story, just hinted at. Now they're both transported to your future where they get further cyborg up upgrades and then go into a kind of virtual training system along with other people transported into from the past. Uh, this training system is very game-like, levels, hit points, stat buffs, weapon damage ranges, uh, but it's also very difficult uh, since it's meant to simulate what these constricted cold soldiers are going to face in the field. So there's very much of a survival uh, story element to this game. Um, again, I would skip right to the 20% mark, skip all the stuff that I that kind of annoyed me, and you're probably going to enjoy the book a lot more. Um, from the 20% mark on, it really did just feel like a, a, a great literary PD story uh, that's about a group of soldiers surviving in this future sci-fi world. Um, a lot of it is about uh, a survival story, finding food, shelter, um, improving your living conditions, then scavenging weapons from this uh, derelict ship that they happen to be on, you know, killing this uh, these cyborg enemy kind of things going on. A lot of team building um, going on in the story as well. It's really good. I actually liked it from that point on. The things that happened before that were confusing. Um, 
and a little bit conflicting because of the societal structure that I think was really rather unrealistic. Um, if you're, this is just a, a side thing. Um, I had an issue with the way that the author kind of described some kind of future where everyone was kind of desperate for dudes because they went around. Um, I, I much prefer that. That just doesn't seem real to me. Like, like women, society would adjust to the lack of men. Different social structure would happen, in my opinion. I much prefer the kind of a uh, social structures that developed in Why the Last Man, if you're going for that kind of uh, female-dominated society. But that's me. Um, but again, uh, there's a, also a fair bit of culturally specific concepts that might not be translating over in Russian, so be aware of that as well. Um, overall, I give it a 6 out of 10, mostly because I didn't like that beginning a lot. Um, if it hadn't been there or if it had just been done differently, I probably would have given a better score. But that's my opinion. Like I said, I liked it after they got into the lit RPG virtual reality training simulation thing. It was really good for the most part. Okay, on to our next story, Sigil Online Paragons, written by Jeff Sproul. Okay, um, you might be familiar with Jeff. He is the wonderful author who wrote some of the stories in the Permadeath series. Um, I'm going to read you off just a brief description that I wrote for the series. Uh, Riley plays a superhero-themed virtual reality MMO. Unfortunately, he lost the game character he'd invested the last two years of his life building to a rare monster. Since a big feature of the game is permadeath, he has to create a new character and find some way to gain the elusive hero powers available in the game. Um, that's kind of the premise that's in, said in the beginning of the story. And it's actually a really good story. I, I enjoyed it immensely. Um, I think Sojo Online kind of epitomizes for me one of the things I love the most about Lit RPG is just the great variety of stories that are possible uh, within our genre. We have sci fi, fantasy, um, dungeon master stories, and of course, hero stories now. Uh, uh, I believe this is the only Lit RPG hero story that's on Amazon currently, um, and it's done pretty decently i have to say it's it's a little light on there, there are no like level up notifications but there's plenty of game mechanics that are explicitly described and the character definitely has a sense of progression the author just does it differently than like levels necessarily um and i, I really like the game mechanics he set up with his story as well uh the writing is really solid I like so the game mechanics are actually uh they feel innovative to me instead of just like automatically gaining powers superpowers, powers as the characters in this virtual reality game level up instead they have to actually go out and search for them and and acquire them in very comic book ways like an explosion or bit by radioactive spiders or involved in some technological thing whatever it is um so it's really hard for these uh, virtual characters to gain these powers and then to increase them again uh, so it does create a a, a sense of difficulty for uh, somebody who has to re-roll their character. Um, so it's a very interesting story. Loved it a lot. Um, it's, it's a very unique world. I definitely give it a good recommend. On to Dexterity Build, a lit RPG serial, episode one. Um, this is from the same author of the Strength Build series. Uh, it is Stephen J. Shelley. Um, and it's another good episode. If you didn't like the episodic nature of the strength build series. You're probably not, not like the episodic nature of this one as well. Um, same kind of concept, um, same character, only he's going back the game and he's making a dexterity build instead of a strength build. I hypothesize in the next season of this uh, serial, you're going to get a magic build. That's just my guess. Um, but it's, it's good for what it is. It's like 50 pages, 99 cents, and it's an enjoyable action story. Um, you know, I, I assume that at the end of this particular season, he's the author's going to collect the stories again and put them as a, as an omnibus. What's well, going to be, you know, uh, two hundred pages for like three bucks. You know, so if you're if you if you don't like the short nature of the stories, just wait. The author's probably going to put them out as a collection again, and you can enjoy a, a much longer read. But for me, the price point is decent enough where I'm going to read it, get about an hour's worth of reading out of it, and just enjoy it. And I'll, and I'll enjoy the ride as it progresses. Um, in the story, you get a good action. It, you get some answers about Gideon, uh, the mysterious figure who was helping Nick, um, the pixel writer in the last um, season of the story, the strength boats uh, season. And Nick picks up a bow and gets a dexterity build, and he goes on his merry way adventuring. That's kind of it. It's not a complicated story. 
not not long at all, but is enjoyable to me. Uh, I don't mind the nature of the story. Okay, on to the last book that we're reviewing. It's going to be Rising Tide um, by Mitchell J. Jacobs. Uh, this was kind of a, a late addition to the podcast because it came out um, right before I recorded. Um, I had a chance to read a good portion of it, and it didn't appeal to me personally. And again, this is not a, a criticism of his writing. The writing is good. It's more of like the theme doesn't appeal to me on a, on a personal level. I will read you the, dis, well, I'm not even going to read you the description. It's kind of long. I'll begin with um, my opinion. 305 pages, $3.99, available on Kindle Unlimited. Great price point. Um, this is, story is from the author of the World at War online series. We'll link in our show notes. If you want to check that one. I love that series a lot. It's like nine books, uh, military sci-fi kind of story, virtual reality game. Really well done. Um, this is a new story from that same author. Um, it's more about trading and smuggling in a steampunk MMO world. Um, I'm not a big fan of pirates and seafaring tales. I'm not a huge fan of the um, the the pirates movie from Disney. Not my kind of story. I'm afraid. But that's just a personal opinion. If you if you love those pirate stories, if you love stories about action and adventure on the high seas, or me uh, then you're probably going to like like this story a lot more than me. Um, I got it about thirty five percent of the story, and it just hadn't quite grabbed me yet. Um, an additional thing I have to say about the story is that it's it's really light on the lit RPG elements. Um, it is set in a game world that's very explicitly stated. There are points of character progression, leveling up, um, creating skill trees. Um, there's even a bit of crafting um, in the story, whether in, in um, improving the ships for to break the stranglehold that the that this one guild has on trade uh, in an area that's ruining the fun for everyone else. Um, it's very much about breaking that monopoly uh, in, in the story and the characters gaining the freedom they used to have within this seafaring uh, steampunk storyline. I do like the idea of, of creating a steampunk world and including a, a high seas adventure. It's just, I like the idea. I don't like the actual seafaring portion of it. Uh, if that makes sense to me, it's just not, it's not my thing. Um, again, it, the, the story was really done nicely. Uh, and if you're into that kind of storyline, you're probably going to like it more than I do. And that's kind of all there is, for, unfortunately. Um, that's it for the podcast, guys. I know it went a little long. We had a lot of books to read, a lot of news. So thank you very much for sticking with me uh, uh, today. It's a little longer than it normally is. Um, thank you for listening, watching. This podcast exists because you guys. So I appreciate you yeah, just sticking with me and listening to me talk about something that I care about and that I love. And I definitely appreciate the big support from everyone that's uh, purchased the book, Adventures on Terra. Um, it means a lot that people are reading it and enjoying it. I put a lot of my heart and into it, I guess you could say, um, and the characters. So uh, I'm definitely working on a, on a book tour already. You don't have to worry about that. Um, it's going to take a while because I'm not a professional author, and these things are hard for me. Uh, so thank you again for taking the time to listen to podcasts. Uh, if you want to learn how to support the podcast in, in any other way, you can do so at litrpdpodcast.com forward slash support. And until I see you guys next time, remember, go read some lit RPG.